Do you want to know what's happening around the world of sports? Look no further than The Bench with your host, Blaine Ool. Welcome back to the episode 14 of The Bench. We open up with the new NCAA men's basketball top 10. At number one, we have Louisville followed by Kansas, Maryland, Michigan sits at number four from uh, going from unranked to four. Virginia sits at five. Ohio State at six. North Carolina at seven. Kentucky at eight. Gonzaga at nine. And rounding out the top ten, we have the Duke Blue Devils. Last night, there were some sweet top ten matchups between the Big Ten and the ACC battle. Michigan's high ride ended last night with a loss 58-43 to to Louisville. Duke beats Michigan State University 87 to 75 at the Spartans' home stadium, a big win for a young Duke team. Indiana beats Florida State 80 to 64, and Dayton drops 99, beating HBU 99 to 68. Tonight, number six Ohio State takes on number seven North Carolina and the continued battle of the Big Ten versus the ACC. Along with that, number five Virginia will play Purdue. Number three Maryland will take on Notre Dame. Right now in the, the basketball top 10, there is three Big Ten schools. We have Michigan, Ohio State, and uh, Maryland, and then at number 11 is also Michigan State. Baylor beat MD Eastern 78-47, and tonight Gonzaga takes on Texas Southern. Russell Wilson and the Seahawks get a big win against the Vikings on Monday Night Football, a 37-30 victory for the Seahawks, as Kirk Cousins is now 0-8 on Monday Night Football games, and Russell Wilson lets the stadium again to MVP chance. The new college football playoff top 10 has also came out. Ohio State is still remaining at number 1, LSU at 2, followed by Clemson at 3, and Georgia at 4. Looking outside in at number 5, we have Utah, 6 has Oklahoma, 7 at Baylor, Wisconsin at eight, Florida at nine, and rounding out the top 10 is the Penn State Nittany Lions. The first college playoff that won't feature a Nick Saban in the Crimson Tide since 2014 as Alabama drops all the way to 12. Boys basketball took a tough loss last night, 71 to 43 to the Butler Aviators as the girls travel to Vandalia tonight looking to improve to 4-0 on the season. This Friday, we need a serious student section. We need to bring the juice, we need to bring the hype, as both girls and boys have a dual battle against Sydney. It's gonna be a high atmosphere game and we need everyone out, the theme is a whiteout. Keep an eye out for that Thursday night football game as the struggling Cowboys take on the Bears. Ron Rivera from the Panthers was fired and Greg Schiano got an eight year deal to head back to head coach for the Rutgers Knights. I would also like to congratulate Big Rouse and Jarrell Lewis on their third team all state. Congratulations, boys. For today's monologue, we're gonna talk a little bit about both the top 10 for basketball and both the top 10 for football. We're gonna start with basketball. The Big 10 is rolling right now in basketball. They have three teams in the top 10 and they have Michigan State sitting at 11. For, uh, obviously, uh, Michigan had a tough loss last night to a good Louisville team, but they'll take that loss and bounce back. Ohio State has a big matchup against number seven, North Carolina tonight. I'm excited to see really who they are because this is the test. If they can get through that Cole Anthony and the Tar Heels, they're, they're legit. Michigan State, I watched that game last night. They didn't start off hot, Duke did. They couldn't battle back. The Spartans fall to, I believe, like five and three now. They're probably gonna drop back in the poll the, the next time it's released. But you know, I, I have faith that Sparty team, they're always tough, they're always gritty. They're gonna get things turned around. And the Blue Devils are young. They didn't play without one of their best players last night. They're led by that point guard, Trey Jones. He's having a heck of a season. You know, the Blue Devils are always going to be good. They're always going to be at the end of the season. They're always going to be that team you kind of don't want to play trying to reach that Elite Eight or the Final Four. Maryland, where'd they come from? I know they've been somewhat good the last couple years in basketball, but they make a jump to number three overall in the nation. The Turpins... I don't know a whole lot about their team. I assume they aren't too young, being number three in the nation. They have a good core group of guys that have returned from uh, other seasons that are really starting to play ball, and it's shown as they open up at number three. Purdue is also uh, still coming off a great season last year. They lost their best player, Carson Edwards, to the NBA, but they, they, they got a tall seven-footer 
at the center position from what I remember. He did return. He's probably their best player this year. Purdue's always had a strong basketball team. They may not be ranked as of right now, but you'll definitely find them in the mix towards the end of the year. The University of Dayton, man, I'm telling you, I said they were legit on Monday's podcast, and they are seriously still legit. They dropped 99 points last night. I think I saw Obi Toppin had 17, and uh, Dayton grad Robert Landers, his brother, uh, Trey Landers, plays for Dayton. He dropped 16 points for the Flyers last night. They have a great group of shooting guards that can hit threes from anywhere. And with Toppin on the inside, they're hard to beat. They are going to be a great basketball team. But when this is all said and done, look forward to them to continue to jump every single week as they uh, you know, continue to win. The college football playoff rankings uh, came out on Tuesday. Uh, the top four, we did not see a change. We still have Ohio State, LSU, Clemson, and Georgia. Now, what did change was that five spot. Utah bumped up, and Oklahoma also bumped up to six. Oklahoma will play Baylor this week in the Big 12 championship game. They are six and seven. Utah will have to play that Pac-12 championship against Oregon. Ohio State obviously plays Wisconsin, and LSU, Georgia. That's the game I'm kind of highlighting right now. If LSU wins, Georgia is out. If Georgia wins, I do believe there's going to be two SEC teams in this year's playoff again. Ohio State, if they win, they're in. But that Georgia LSU game, it's also going to determine where everyone ends up because, like AJ was saying to me earlier, if Georgia wins a close one, they might go ahead and flip two and four, and that leaves Ohio State playing LSU. Clemson will take on Virginia in the ACC championship game. This should be a stomping for them. They should definitely get past Virginia, and they should find their way back into the college football playoffs as they always have, basically since it started. You know, Dabo Sweeney's done a great job down there. We're going to see what this Clemson team's all about as they face their real first opponent, in my opinion, will be that first semifinal game in the playoffs if they make it. Who knows? That's why you always play the game. Virginia could come up with the upset, but I don't see it happening. Last week, UC took on Memphis in Memphis and battled them hard without the starting quarterback. A true freshman was in. He did good, played well, but they did not come up with a win. Memphis high-powered offense is one of the most electrifying offenses I have seen in college football. Kevin Johns is a great offensive coordinator, and he's doing great things with the athletes that he's doing, that he has, pardon me. Uh, with that loss, though, UC will head straight back down to Memphis, and they'll play them yet again in the American Conference Championship game. Uh, I'm, I'm a little struggling with who to pick here. I, I haven't heard whether UC gets their quarterback uh, back, Desmond Ritter. I'm not for sure. If they do, I like him running. But the quarterback that I saw UC put in uh, last week has a cannon for an arm and threw the ball extremely well, almost better than Ritter in some cases. So look for UC to you know, obviously come in with a little bit of revenge. Fickle's going to have the boys ready to play. But that Memphis offense, I, I just don't know if, if UC's defense is ready to, to match that electrifying offense that, that Kevin Johns has uh, working right now for the Tigers. And I have heard uh, you know, rumors that if Memphis wins, they could go on to play Alabama, this or that. I'm not for sure on that whole situation right now. I'm just going to go ahead and say you know, Memphis is obviously an extremely good football team, and they're going to get a, a pretty good bowl game this year, win or lose. So as many of you know, Alabama took another loss last week in the Iron Bowl to Auburn. A great game, came down to a field goal. The, you know, the Alabama kicker just wasn't able to convert. But that's not the play I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about the play when Auburn got the ball back after that field goal with right about two minutes to play. I had a gut feeling that the Bama defense was going to hold and they were going to get one more shot with about 50 seconds left. It comes down to a fourth and about three. Auburn does something that is pretty controversial right now. They line up in a weird formation, bringing the punter out to wide receiver, so it looks like an offensive formation. Bama gets confused. They have too many players on the field. They have the regular defense plus the punt returner in Jalen Waddell. There was a miscommunication there. No one saw the formation, and Alabama gets called for too many men on the field, giving Auburn that first down, sealing the game. Now, the play that I saw was honestly pretty smart, if you ask me. They put the runner out at receiver. It confused the Bama defense, confused the coaching staff, and you know they outsmarted them. 
And sometimes in that point in that game against a Bama team that was, you know, obviously looking to drive down the field and win, you maybe you have to do that. Maybe you have to go on to fake a play, you know, go for it. Something like something big later in the game that's going to give you that win. So they got the first down and Bo Nix took a knee and that Auburn uh, Tiger uh, team got the win. You know, it seems like every other year they're just pulling off a win against Bama and Nick Saban just cannot get over that Iron Bowl. Uh, obviously, they had that kick return, you know, years back. Yeah, they ha uh, AJ just told me they haven't had a one, they haven't won a game against a ranked Auburn team in Auburn with Saban his entire career at Alabama. That's just stunning to me. And, you know, Saban's always a great coach, but he's got to figure out a way to beat Auburn in an Iron Bowl at some point when they're ranked at that stadium. Because if they do, I tell you what, right now, they're sitting right at number five in that college football playoffs. And they're going and they're thinking, all right, LSU, let's beat Georgia and let's get us in there. But obviously they lost. They fell back to 12. And, you know, that's, that's what the college football committee has chose for their top 10 along with the basketball. So just a great atmosphere for college sports right now especially football basketball is just getting started but really looking forward to seeing how all this plays out with that being said i'm blaine Ull. this has been the bench i look forward to seeing you on friday